Hello and welcome to the third video in our little series about how to use a micro bit to control LEDs. So this is the final introductory session and what I'm going to show you is how to use some of the sensors and buttons inside the micro bit to be interactive with your LED strips, so to allow people to change the colours and so on by pressing buttons or move the micro bit. So I'm still running the rainbow program from the last um, video, but I'm now going to go over to the make code editor and create something new, which is interactive micro bit, uh, interactive light, I'll call it that. So as before, we get our little um, desktop here where we have the micro bit simulator, we have all the commands in the middle and we have our program. Uh, the start and forever bits it are over on the side there. And as before, we need to add the micro bit NeoPixel extension. So I've gone down to the bottom of my menu and I choose NeoPixel. And this gives me the really easy to use commands to control the strip. So here we go. And I have to also, the first thing I have to do is choose the command set and I'm going to say that the NeoPixels are on pin 2 and there are 10 of them. Now of course I'm still running a previous program on the micro bit. As I mentioned in the first video I could if I wanted to, in fact I might do it now, I could unplug the micro bit from the computer and I could plug this battery pack in. So you just have to get the right way round and now when I switch on the battery I have the micro bit and the LEDs all standalone, um, so you don't need to have the computer plugged in. However, I can't program it now because the program goes from the computer down the USB cable into the micro bit. So I'm going to unplug my battery pack and put my LED, sorry, put my USB cable in, right, right way round. There we go, <coughs> and it will start running the program again. But also, I'll be ready to send a program to it. Now I should just check that I'm connected. Yes, it's automatically connected my micro bit. Sometimes it will disconnect and you'll have to reconnect. Um, I also mentioned about downloading your program as a file. So if I click on that, it will download a program called uh, microbitinteractivelights.hex and you will drag and drop that program onto your micro bit. So I could nip over to here, let's have a look on my desktop. And there's the micro bit on my desktop waiting for me to drag and drop the program onto it. That's another way of programming it. Okay, so I've added the strip command and I'm now going to tell the NeoPixel strip to switch everything off. When you have a program already on here, already running, that program, the LEDs will stay in that state until you tell it otherwise. So I'm actually going to say, go black. Black means switching off. Somebody did ask me how, how can you display the colour black on a strip here? And I said, well, you can't. All you can do is not display colour. So let's have a look. So if I send black down to the strip, all the LEDs now go off. So we've got a fresh and um, clear strip to work with. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to use the switches built into the micro bit to change the colours when you press them. So if I go to the input commands, I have this little function here, or this little bit of code, which allows me to do something when button A is pressed. And the thing I'm going to do, quite simple, I'm going to display the color red. And then I'm going to grab one of those again, do something when button B is pressed. And I should point out that you hopefully will have noticed on the front of your micro bit that the buttons are labeled A and B. So it's referring to these two buttons here. And I'm going to display the colour green. Now, I'm also going to display a heart at the beginning so that I know the micro bit's running. Otherwise there'll be nothing on the screen. Now again, you can even simulate this by going to the virtual micro bit and pressing the button. There's the red, there's the green, there's the red. But let's send the program down to our micro bit so that we can run it for real. So, nothing displayed until I press the button, that's the green one, and the other button, that's the red one. So we have a very basic interactive light 
um, program here where we can make it change color. Now the micro bit has lots of sensors. The switches are really sensors. They just sense when you press something. Another fun one to use is the shake. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to display a rainbow when you shake the micro bit. And there's my display rainbow. And I'm going to send that program down. Now by shake, I literally mean, wait for it to finish, there we go. Shaking the micro bit, there we go. If I shake the micro bit, there's a rainbow. If I press the buttons, I get different colors. So you've got really the basis now, I'm gonna shake it again and display the rainbow. The basis now of a simple interactive program. So let's have a look at what else the micro bit can do. So most of this stuff is under inputs. Now you can connect switches to the different pins. You've got pin zero, pin one, and pin two we're using, and then the uh, power and ground. But also in between those, there are a whole bunch of smaller pins. And you can get an adapter to plug in and you'll have a lot of pins. So you could have a, a piece of work where there are lots of buttons and you press them and they switch um, different colors on. You'll find information about that on the, uh, the Microbit website about how to use these little connectors, how to use the pins. If we have a Microbit 2, we can also sense sound. So if you were to clap your hands, it would switch, it could switch the uh, LEDs on. I mentioned the shake. We also have the, what they call the compass, uh, which is the direction of the Microbit. So you can make it change color when you move your uh, Microbit around. So we have a whole range of different other inputs. We have temperature and the, the pins when they're pressed, uh, the light level. So you can make a light that when it goes dark will automatically switch on, that's quite a nice one. But if we look at the shake option here, there are a whole bunch of other um, things you can sense when you move the micro bit. So I'm gonna get rid of that and I now have shake. And if we open up the options here, we have a whole bunch of different motions, gestures if you like. So we can detect if the micro bit is this way up, or it's that way up, or it's on its side and so on. So what I think I'll do now to add a bit more interactivity to this is I'll make it so that when you move the micro bit, the colors change. So I'm going to use micro bit sign up. You can see the micro bit sign on the top. And when the micro bit sign is up, I'm going to display my rainbow. But when the micro bit sign is down, I'm going to, um, let's display the color purple. So I'm taking the one that says shake, but I then select logo down. And in here, I'm going to choose show color, and I'm going to choose purple. So now I have a program when the button's pressed, it goes green, or when the B button's pressed. When the A button's pressed, it goes red. When the logo is facing up, or it detects and change and the logo is facing up, it goes um, rainbow. And when the logo is down, it goes purple. So a lot of different, different things happen. So send the program down, and we'll see what happens when we move the micro bit around. So if I go logo up, which means the logo is facing upwards, I get a rainbow. If I go logo down, I get purple and I still have my button presses. So I have red and I have green button presses. So now it's doing a whole range of different things depending on what the micro bit's doing. Now I had some students recently who made a great little project where they put the micro bit inside a cube like a giant dice and when you move the micro bit onto different sides it would lift up in different colors. So you could roll it and it would go red, green, blue, purple, and then wherever it stopped was the color that was selected. So really creative little project there for um, the micro bit using the sensors to light up the strip and light up the thing, the cube that they'd made. Now, if you go through what else the micro bit can do, and there are lots of things it can do, hopefully you'll see how you could build lights into your project quite easily. I've mentioned sound. We're not gonna go through sound today, but the music commands when you have a speaker attached or a micro bit too, will let you do sounds as well as light. The LED screen, you can animate and do patterns like you saw in the demo. The radio is not a radio for you to listen to. 
It's a way in which micro bits can talk to each other. So you can have it that you press a button on your micro bit and it lights up somebody, else micro, somebody else's micro bit. It's quite good fun. And then there are lots of other ways in which you'll write more complicated programs. And of course, just to remind ourselves, the NeoPixel modules were the ones that we used to light up the strip using the micro bit. And I've shown you how to display colors, but you can display like a little bar, bar um, chart of numbers. Um, you can display hue, saturation, and luminosity colors. That's a different way of describing a color. And you can rotate the pixels. And there are some more commands here as well. You can set an individual pixel, so you can have one that's set red and another one that's set blue and so on. And a few others as well that you can have a, uh, a look through. And there's even a red, green, blue option, so you can set the colors to uh, any red, green, blue value that you like. So hopefully what you've seen over the, the three videos is first of all how you can use the micro bit with your computer. The kits that we've been distributing as part of Light Up Leicester have been donated by the micro bit Education Foundation, but they are also available in many electronics stores and online. Um, sites like Amazon and Pimer only sell them. We have the kit of the um, USB cable and the battery pack. And then we're also distributing these light strips. Light strips are also available online. Um, these are slightly special ones in that we've had the micro, are also available online. These are slightly special ones in that we've also had the crocodile clips added to the LED strips. But you should be able to find them yourself online if you haven't got one of our provided kits. So all that remains really is to say, come up with ideas, be creative with the light strip, maybe create a bigger project, perhaps look at embedding the lights into other objects, so you could make a lamp or you could make a, a dice like I mentioned and, and so on. And if you're in Leicester during a light festival, come along and see what other people have been doing. We're going to be exhibiting work that's um, been produced during the festival and we hope that uh, you have fun being creative with light. <laughs>